Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. We have a interesting report that came out on Friday from Binance. This is part of the Binance research, and they did a report that looked at the top 30 crypto assets. They excluded stable coins, but for those that have a market cap above 3 billion from March 2018 to March 2019, XRP is the best diversifier. Now, what does that mean? Well, it has a very low correlation and it has even become even lower since previous reports. And what that correlation means is the correlation to the market. So a low correlation is a crypto asset that follows its own path. As opposed to BTC or Ethereum, they have the highest correlation and they tend to follow the same market trends. So cluster analysis is a technique where they group objects with similar characteristics. And the digital assets, of course, are grouped into several sub-segments. Sub now, this is important because when people are creating portfolios, it's very important to have a diversified portfolio. And the fact that XRP now is really a separate entity from the masses gives it some differentiation and the fact that it is a diversifier uh, it will be one of those assets that are chosen to put into a basket of crypto assets for portfolios because it does ha give that balance so i think this report is very positive all right, I am going to not spend too much time uh, in the future about Mr. Kitao and SBI Holdings, only when it's warranted. But what I am noticing out there in social media is because of his new position being uh, welcome to the board uh, of Ripple, there's a lot of focus and a lot of stories going out there about SBI Holdings, the holdings company, the conglomerate that has 230 some companies, and also a lot of people looking at Mr. Kitao. And I wanna give everybody just a really quick mile high view of the company so that you really know if what you are reading or watching is correct. So this company is a spinoff of SoftBank and it was given seed capital by SoftBank back in March 1999. And then Mr. Kitao, who's been at the lead, uh, has taken this company from basically a $500,000 seed capital run to a, you know, a billion dollar uh, business now. And that business has gone through a lot of changes. Uh, it was back in Japan in 2000 that it was listed on the NASDAQ and then it made it to the first section of the Tokyo Stock Exchange in 2002. In 2003, it had a big break where it merged with the E-Trade Japan and it became a securities company. And they are still today the number one securities company and they lead in that space. Well, he continued to evolve and it's changed its structure many times. In 2006, uh, fully exited as an affiliate company of SoftBank. It now has 20 offices all over the world. And even early on, uh, it has uh, representative offices in Beijing and Shanghai. Those were the first two companies that were established outside of Japan. So when you take a look at uh, the structure of shareholders. So you can own stock in this company. There are um, retail investors as well as institutional investors. And you can see that the percentage of shares held, there is a list of what, 10 major shareholders? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And uh, at the top is Japan Trustee Services Bank Trust Account, and they own 9.8%. And if you even come down the list here, you can see that Mr. Kitao himself owns 1.6 uh, of those shares that represent the uh, mothership, if you will, the parent company, the holdings company, SBI Holdings. Okay, so 
if we just kind of take a look at the Japan Trustee Services Bank, I'll put a link down in the description below if you're kind of curious on what this is, but it's basically a trust of assets such as pension assets and money trusts and uh, securities investment trusts. And they are a uh, uh, company, if you will, or a trust that has uh, 51 billion yen in capital. So that gives you kind of the structure of who's involved. When you look at SBI, they have what, 230 some companies and every company has its own balance sheet and it has its own uh, profit and loss, if you will, its own uh, management within that uh, structure and it has also in sometimes it has funds where it is investing in other companies or sometimes buying other companies or taking in investments uh, so you have seen recently they created the money tap is now a separate entity and they are taking in investments so if you go down and just take a look here you can find one of the companies is sbi ripple asia and you can well you can just you can click on that at any time and it'll take you to the um the detail of how that is structured and in this particular case sbi has 60 percent and ripple has a 40% in terms of the share of the company. So you can see that there was paid in capital at the time this was formed of 350 million yen. And uh, the representative was Takashi Okita. Is he still, yeah, I still, and this is, this is, um, this is still, uh, yeah, this is still current. Because um, the reason why I'm questioning myself is because SBI just announced a new um, corporate shuffle, a structure, a, a management shuffle, which we can take a look at here. Um, but first, so when you look at all the deals that are done, there is, uh, you know, somebody was highlighting um, where Goldman Sachs had made a 50% share in one of the companies that falls underneath the umbrella, Japan Next. And so there is just, there are just hundreds of um, investments going out and coming in along with joint ventures uh, every year. So you're gonna see a lot of information and you can use the website to keep up on it. In fact, on the 26th on Friday, the amount of announcements was just unbelievable. Uh, I think it was one of the record days in terms of announcements. And this is one of those announcements that came out of um, Friday. And you can see here, SBI Holdings Inc. But the joint venture is happening with another company within the, um, um, under the umbrella. It's the SBI Neo Financial Services. They are doing something that's very interesting. They are, uh, engaging in a joint venture with a company in China. And the association is with China's largest private financial institution. And SBI is going to take a 60% share and it's with a smartphone application. It is a application for financial institutions and it's been rolled out into China. And the interesting part is that when businesses or banks add this to their, um, to their as a service, they have a sevenfold increase of new acquisitions. That is incredibly high. So you, the analysis is done with AI and they use customer preferences to make recommendations tailored to each person using an AI chat bot. Wow. So SBI is going to use this tool here and they will localize it for Japan. Okay, and this is that kind of corporate structure I was talking about that has changed. This is a notice in change of officers. And when you come down here, I just want to show you that as of June 27, 2019, um, at the very top of the food chain is Mr. Kitao and everyone falls below him. So Mr. Kitao, in essence, 
is working for the shareholders, but he is the number one guy and he is leading all of this company, which has so many different <laughs> things going on. It's, it's, uh, yeah, well, just, just take a peek onto the uh, press release or news release page someday and just see everything that's happening. It's, it's quite something. All right. One of the outside directors, which I think is interesting, is going to be this gal here. She is uh, a former NHK announcer. She's kind of known as an idol announcer when she was in her career. Her name is Junko Kubo. And uh, she is now a freelancer. Uh, she went to school actually a little bit in the United States. And she's also from the same college. She's from Keio University, which is also um, one of the universities that Mr. Kitao graduated from. So anyway, I think that it's an interesting choice for sure that she is uh, going to be an outside director. All right, everybody. Gosh, we are going to the fluff already. So May 5th, that is coming up. And what we're starting to see around Japan are these koi windsocks being flown. And this is actually a print from the Edo period. Uh, I think it's like a mid 1800s, a little bit maybe before. I think the date is actually 1857. I'm I'm not quite sure, but you can see that this is a very old tradition in Japan, and it was to celebrate the Boys' Day, which was always on May 5th. And the koi represents strength and courage, and it was flown to symbolize that strength and courage, and also for the boys in the family to be healthy. And uh, it's because the koi have to work so hard to go upstream that they are a symbol of strength here in Japan. So in addition to that, during the Edo period on Boys Day, uh, it was very common for the samurai families to bring out the armor and helmets to celebrate this Boys Day. And it was symbolic, of course, as the carp were as well. But this was an in-the-house display for the samurai family. But for the carp, uh, the windsocks, they are really for everybody. And they, in that tradition, still continues today. And what we are seeing now in the neighborhoods, in the cities, and in the country, we see these large kind of flagpoles uh, with a windsock at the top. And if they are of a prominent family that has a crest, sometimes you'll see the family crest on the top windsock, and then you see the koi. Now, the big black one represents the father in the family. The red one is the mother, and the blue one is the one boy in the family. So if there are more boys in the family, you'll see more carp flying below. But the interesting thing is that this, um, this tradition of flying carp also now occurs over uh, rivers and there's just, you know, cities, there's one city in particular in uh, Ibaraki that flies a thousand carp over the river. It's just really beautiful and visually something to see. Uh, you can um, see little tiny ones hanging from windows of apartments to these very, very large. These these are these are enormous. This is this is probably somewhere in like three meters, which would be you know like nine, ten feet long. So the factories, there's still a lot of factories. This is still big business here in Japan. You can see that um, the carp are made. See how big it is? You can get a feel for the size when you see the man standing next to one. So they are still handmade, hand cut, hand sewn. And there you go. So this is this is one uh, this is one that has a crest from a family. And then there's the father carp, the mother carp, 
the one boy, and then they have two more children. And it could be now girls. I it, It's not always now so boy-centric. It's now also on May 5th, it's called Children's Day. So they have changed it from Boys' Day to Children's Day. And i give you one last picture. And this is so classic with Mount Fuji in the back. And you can see they have three children in this family. This is a very large pole. If you live out in the country, you can put up one of these very tall poles and let the carp fly in the wind. It's, it's just fun to see. And look at the rice now. The rice is just coming up out of the paddy. And by what, July, August, it'll be knee high. So it's just on its way. All right, everybody, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.